going on, guys? You're sitting at home on the couch doing nothing? That's why you're gonna subscribe to Black is the New Rich, so you can learn something, educate your family, educate your friends, do it all. Black is the New Rich, peace. So I start to check the market. Billion dollar industry, really? How much do black people consume over 80%? Oh, wow. Really? In 2022 and everything's digital, 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 how do you remain to have a faceless brand, brand and it's successful? They got the luxury of any other option. Being a man in the industry, you know, True. I can't come, hey guys, I got sweet mango and rose water for you. Yeah. like, okay, creep. <laughs> <laughs> so I want you to like it and love it first. I don't really care to be liked. Mm -hmm. You just want a good product. I just want, I, I sell a great product. Mm -hmm. This product is better than anything you use. Mm -hmm. I used to put under every post. If you don't like it, I'll pay your rent. Back again, episode 19 of the Black is the New Rich podcast. And today we got a special guest because I feel like in 2022, it's a little bit hard to run a faceless brand, but this person runs a successful uh, faceless brand and I want to pick his brain on how he does it. But uh, no more. I just want to let him introduce himself. Introduce myself. My name is Kamani. I'll leave it there on all social media platforms. I go by King Mani. I am the founder of Marche Beauty, you know, natural skincare brand, uh, specializing in, you know, skincare, hair care, all of, all of that. Dope, dope, dope. So I just want to let everyone know you have your products in the UK right now, right? Yes, I do. And why I found you so intriguing, because you don't really hear a lot of men into the like the yeah. skincare the beauty care business but i just feel that you know because you are how do i say it because you're the minority it's a place to take over oh yeah definitely the minority you don't see men getting into the kind of stuff that i'm into like you'll see men getting into like selling shea butter okay you cool. know importing shea butter yeah. and stuff like that like, yeah yeah and that kind of stuff but getting into the beauty industry no you don't i'm see definitely it, right? a minority one of one, one i of one, bet sure. all right so before we get into what you're doing now i want to take it back to the lead up um just before you were getting into the beauty business what were you doing and what sparked your mind to get into this uh what was i doing before the skincare industry i've met, lived many lives bro mm -hmm. you know I used to be a party promoter, mm -hmm. used to be a DJ, used to be a wannabe NBA player. Yeah, okay, dope. You know, and allegedly uh, in the streets. Yeah. You know, I say allegedly. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, a reason. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, but everything all wrapped up in one, I feel like is what makes me me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I took all those experiences and really put it into this. Okay. Full force. Dope. So being, playing basketball, being a DJ, um, being in a different type of life, um, how did? Because obviously that takes a different mindset. Definitely. How did you switch that? <sighs> that? That's a good question. I mean, as far as like being a DJ and being a promoter and stuff like that, I've always been like a to myself kind of person. What's the word for that? Uh, introverted. Introverted. Mm. I still am to a certain me too, degree. Me too. But being a DJ forced me to uh, speak. Yeah, with people. for sure. For sure. You know what I mean? So. Being a DJ and then parlaying that into, actually funny, when I was a DJ, I'll admit it, I wasn't getting much gigs. Mm -hmm. I thought I was the nicest DJ in the city that yeah. nobody knew about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, you know what? No one's hiring me. How about I throw my own parties and hire my damn self? Mm -hmm. So that's what I started to do. But then I started to see the dollars. I'm like, what am I DJing for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let yeah. me just start running parties. Yeah. I teamed up with a, you know some family that were DJs and they were kind of well-known all throughout the city. Mm-hmm. And we we're doing that for a little while, and honestly, you know, I kind of got bored of it. Yeah, yeah, it just wasn't me really having to party like five days a week. Yeah, and especially because you're introverted, right? Because I can relate. Yeah. I'm introverted, so when we well, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but when we have to go into social settings, it takes so much out of us. Oh yeah, it takes a lot. Like I have my time limit. Exactly. You know, like on the <laughs> microwave, like yep, yeah, put it on one minute. Yeah. When you hear that beep, it's time to go. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I feel that a hundred percent because a lot of people don't understand. Like sometimes I just gotta uh, like step away from things, or after I go out, I need a day just for myself 100 percent. like i'm 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 even worse with it like i'll be out and i'll be at like if i go to go i don't go to clubs anymore really but if i'm at some kind of setting where there's music and people mm -hmm. i'll be in the back of it just thinking how i can make money off of everyone 
Mm, you know what I mean? I'm just still like, okay, we have about 300 people yeah. times uh, 200 bottles, carry the four, multiply it by <laughs> five. I need to own something. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do I, how do I own this venue? Mm-hmm. You know, that's the way my mind thinks. Everyone else is having fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready to go. Yeah, lit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So even, um, let's go, even before then, right? Let's say coming out of high school, were you, did you do the post-secondary at all or? Here's the thing. I got kicked out of high school. Okay. What high school you went to? I went to Aquinas, St. Uh, Thomas Aquinas. In uh, Brampton. In Brampton. Okay, okay, okay. I went to I went St. To Thomas Gates. Aquinas. You went to Gates? Yeah, I went oh. to Father Gates. So you're Hooper. Here. Yeah, Hooper. Yeah, Say yeah, no yeah, yeah. Say yeah, no yeah. <laughs> I went to Aquinas and I got kicked out after grade 10. Oh, wow. And, you know, honestly, I haven't really spoken on it much, but I remember I tried to get into other schools. I went to Toronto School Board. Mm -hmm. I went as far as Scarborough. Mm -hmm. You know what they told me when I tried to register? Mm. They told me they're full. Wow. What, because they seen a record or? They contacted the previous school. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and they were like, yeah, we're full. Jeez. Not even like, you know, you're out of the jurisdiction. Because I always had addresses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They said, no, nah, we're full. We're, we're good. You uh, Go. You wow. know what I mean? But the thing is, I personally didn't think I was a bad student. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I had a, a authority issues, I guess they said. Mm-hmm. Right? I just had, in my opinion, I think I just had issues with teachers asserting disrespect over me because they're teachers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I actually remember one time I got... Suspended for, I think I was probably two weeks in high school. Mm-hmm. And I missed about a test and two quizzes in math. And they gave you zeros for it? No, I, yeah, yeah. And I came back and my mark was like still 65. That's how good I was. Wow. I wasn't a bad yeah, student. Okay, okay, wow. You know what I mean? When they read, I remember in high school, they would read out and be like, whatever, whatever. Yeah. 64, 72. And they, everyone looked at me. I'm like, <laughs> can I say I'm brilliant? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, I mean, I think I was that kind of student and, you know, I got kicked out. This episode is sponsored by Black is the New Rich Clothing. Aren't you tired of brands taking your cool and not giving back? Rich in spirit, rich in body, rich in wealth. Breathe it, live it, wear it. Black is the New Rich. Didn't get into any schools. Mm -hmm. Since grade 10. Since grade 10. So you haven't done school since grade 10. What? I went to college. How? As a mature student. Oh, interesting. Okay. Years later. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So when I got kicked out now, um, you know, single parent household, mom's working 25-8. Mm-hmm. You know, there wasn't really much, shout out to moms, wasn't really much structure there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you know? kind of raising yourself. Yeah. Pops is in a whole other country. Yeah. You know? So there's only so much he can do. Yeah. So allegedly, I went to the streets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I was living that kind of life for a bit. And I'm like, you know what? End up doing some time. Yeah? Yeah, end up doing some time. And I actually did two years. Mm. You know, I don't speak on that public, yeah. but here we go. Yeah. Exclusives. <laughs> right? End up doing two years. Came home. I was like, you know what? I got to do different. You mm-hmm. know? So I went to college. And it's funny because, not funny, but I ended up leaving college. So I didn't graduate college either. Yeah. So I got kicked out of high school, but I dropped myself out of college. Yeah, same right yeah. so i'm i'm in college though and i'm taking um as electrical engineer okay don't so I'm, I'm in there and i'm like these guys don't know how to teach i'm not learning mm-hmm. i used to youtube everything after the class yeah so i'm like what am i doing here if i'm not learning and on top of that i have two children to take mm-hmm. care of so that's i need before, to work that's before you i have two in? children by the age of 19 oh wow yeah. Okay, so you had a lot on your plate. I had a lot on my plate. Jeez. Yeah. So okay, so yeah, so you're going with the college thing. You wasn't feeling you weren't feeling it, it wasn't for you. Yeah, so you know, I ended up getting a job through an agency, mm-hmm. which in, at the time was the best job I ever had. Mm-hmm. I was like getting 12-hour shifts. I'm working. It was all the way in um uh, Oakville off of Trafalgar. No, I'm lying. In Milton. Mm-hmm. There's a place called Carmax. Mhm. So basically, it's like you assemble cars, Mm -hmm. like the doors, you put the doors there and you connect the dots. Mm -hmm. And I was doing that and I was, was, you know, Mm -hmm. and what they used to tell us was um, after I think it was about six months, they'll hire you straight on um, aside from the agency. Mm -hmm. And when they hire you, they start you at $32 an hour. Oh, that's that's good. I was like 23. Oh, that's good. 
So I'm like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> right? Mind you, it is in Milton. Yeah. I'm 23. Mm-hmm. Now, one day I was driving, it was about five, well, I started 5.45 in the morning. Mm-hmm. So it's probably four something in the morning. I'm driving, boom, car broke down oh, fuck. on the highway. Yeah. You know, I wasn't legit. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I had to turn off on, a, on a, whatever the first exit. Yeah. And I parked up. And I'm like, damn, how could I get to work? Like, I'm just trying to work. Yeah. I'm trying, mind you, I was in the streets, allegedly. Yeah. yeah. Now, I got a job out of, after dropping out of college, got a job. I'm just trying to maintain it, mm-hmm. to be a man about my responsibilities at mm-hmm. 23. Two kids. Two kids. All right. So, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm like, okay, cool. I called a coworker. I'm like, hey, can you pick me up on your way? Mm-hmm. He said, no. Okay, cool, shit. I didn't have no money for a taxi. Shit. I wasn't willing to leave the car there and come back for it later. That's how serious you about changing your life. I end up, I called the agency. I'm like, hey, listen, I got into a, an accident on the way to work. Yeah. You know, can you give me a little chance today? Yeah. They're like, okay, cool. You know, no worries. Thanks for calling us early, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, all right, cool. Everything is good. Later on, I called them. I'm like, okay, everything's good. I'm going to work tomorrow. They're like, um, you're going to need a doctor's note. Wow. I said, doctors know for what? I wasn't sick. Yeah. Car broke down. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They're like, okay, but we need something to show the company mm-hmm. why you missed the work. I said, all right, cool. I, you know, I got a little doctor's note. Yeah. I got a doctor's note. <laughs> and I, I brought it back to the agency. And they're like, okay, they'll call me when another position's available. Wow. They never called yeah, me for like three months. Back. Yeah. And that was the only agency at the time that would hire someone with a criminal record. Oh. So then, so, then, 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 then what? That. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, allegedly, I had to back go to, back to what I was doing before. And that, that, that must have fucked you up. If mentally. It, I was, I'm not someone who panics. I never panic. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm kind of known for just being straight. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to lie. I, I broke down. I was like, yo. I'm trying to do good. Mm-hmm. You know, like my whole life, I, I, was, in, I was in fucking poverty. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Always, I always tell the story. Like, I grew up in a basement apartment and upgrade to housing. Wow. The upgrade was housing. Yeah. Ew. It literally was an upgrade. Mm-hmm. I grew literally in a basement. Yeah. You know what I mean? Me and moms. And then it was us again in housing. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, she got my room. Yeah. Hey, you know, balcony. <laughs> I'm looking outside. I'm seeing people. Yeah, like, yeah. I wasn't underground no more. Yeah. Like, but it's crazy looking back when you're like, you know, a housing, government housing is an upgrade to your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying to myself, all these things, all keep being kicked out of school, making wrong decision after wrong decision, having kids early, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And I'm still trying to stay on the straight and narrow. And it's why still, is this happening? It's still messing with you. So I just said, you know what? Fuck it. That's what you want? I'll give it to you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be the best dot yeah, dot dot yeah, that I yeah, could be. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And I was good at it. Yeah. Unfortunately, fortunately. Take, so take me through you did two years, right? Mm-hmm. But you came out and you wanted a job. Take me the take me through the mindset of going in for two years. Because obviously there's <laughs> a lot of kids that are wild right now, right? Yeah. So I think it's cool do doing rate, this, that, and the third. But how did you rehabilitate your mind when you're in? It started in there, though. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was in there and it really set in that I wasn't getting out, I remember I went through, well, the process is like, you go through something called a JPT, Mm -hmm. which is a judicial Mm pretrial. This is after you get denied bail and everything, I believe. It's been so long. So you go through your JPT, and then after that, months later, you go through your prelim, which is a preliminary hearing, Mm -hmm. to see which evidence is going to be brought to trial, and your lawyer will get a better scope of things, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Usually, a lot of people beat their case at the preliminary hearing, Mm -hmm. when the judge realizes there's not enough evidence, or whatever, a lot of of things, Mm -hmm. right? And then there's trial, but when I realized after the JPT, when they're like, no bail, you're going to be here for another six months to your prelim. Jeez. I said, damn. And I'm inside, like, you can't break down. Yeah, in there. yeah, yeah. So I'm walking yeah. through, like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. whatever. Yeah. I was so on edge, bro. Yeah. I got into fights just like, I think that day, actually, before I even got back to the jail. Yeah. Just you for being I mean? on edge. Oh, yeah. Don't say nothing to me. Yeah. Like, I'm a, I'm a mild mannered person. I'm very calm. Yeah. But 
anyone who's known me in my younger years, I'm I'm that person now. Yeah. You know, back then it was like, yo, don't even look at me the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like this is not me. I've never been a gangster. Never been a gangster. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I was always quick on the draw, mm-hmm. so to speak. Mm-hmm. So yeah, definitely the mindset with that was, okay, I'm gonna be in here. What don't I like about myself that I could change? Because mm, you have to face yourself every day now. Yeah. And I looked All at my day. surroundings. Mm-hmm. I'm like, none of you motherfuckers I would be friends with on the road. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are gangster shooters, whatever you want to call yourself. But you guys are fucking losers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Minus, except a, a couple of good dudes. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. From my opinion. But I'm just like, none. I don't want to be like none of you guys. The majority of them were older. Mm-hmm. Still talking that young you boy a, stuff. A, I was like 21 at the time. Yeah. Going in there. Yeah, yeah, 21 yeah. or 22 or somewhere around there. Yeah. And these guys were like 35, 45, you know, some talking young boys language. too. your language. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They tried to start a jail gang with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In my head, I'm like, dude, you're 37. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, I was in there just looking at the surroundings. I'm like, I don't like none of you guys in here. Mm-hmm. I ain't trying to fuck with none of you guys. Whoever I did talk to, like a couple of guys, like the gentleman who, who taught me chess, I think that that was the start of new things. Mm-hmm. The dude, who I later found later, is not a, a good gentleman of society, mm-hmm. you know, but he taught me how to play chess. Mm-hmm. And that know? started to work your brain in different ways. Yes, definitely. Did, were you reading in there at all? See, the, the chess part made me value reading mm-hmm. because chess taught me a lot about myself and how irrational I was and erratic in my behavior. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like playing chess made me understand my own mind Mm. that I needed to check myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of situations I I put myself in. Yeah. I put myself in it because I didn't think about it. Mm -hmm. So like you said, think about the moves. When I actually do think about the moves, I make the best one. Mm -hmm. Even if I mess up, I didn't really mess up. Mm -hmm. I got another move for that mess up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that led me into starting to read books. Now, prior to so three things I did when I asked myself, uh, what do I need to change about myself? What what don't I like about myself? I lost weight. Mm-hmm. I, t- I was overweight. I lost weight. I started reading and I changed my writing, my mm-hmm. script. I had chicken scratch writing. Yeah. I couldn't write for shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Because like I was never in school and shit. Right? Yeah, yeah. So what I used to do was, um, <laughs> I probably told one person this story. What I used to do was, at the time, I wasn't getting any letters. Mm-hmm. From anyone, anyone outside. At yeah. that time, right? Yeah. Later yeah. on, I did. But at that time, I wasn't getting any letters. So what I used to do was, I used to see other people that are getting letters, and I would see them writing their letters out on the range. Yeah. And I would copy their writing as they're writing. And I would, it kind of got a little weird. People were like, yo, bro. <laughs> I'm like, well, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I was for a certain small period of time. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I had to be outside of You're who I really yourself. am. Yeah, yeah. I was protecting my heart. You know? Yeah. Because I'm a, I'm a good dude. Yeah. But in there, you can't show love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, well, shut up, yo. I'm just looking at it. Then eventually, <laughs> people, I see other people getting letters. I'm like, yo, let me see. No, no, no disrespect. Let me just see the, the how they did that J. I like mm-hmm. that J. Let me copy that J. Yeah. Okay, I like the way they did the R. When they connected it with the A, with the little swoop, okay, cool, let me take that. I literally have sheets of paper till this day that with little letters and me writing sentences wow. and trying. Just to perfect your writing. Just to perfect my writing. If you see me write right now, you think a girl wrote it. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. 100. And I documented every day that I was in there after the JPT, I wrote about it. Mm-hmm. So basically, the, your, it sounds like your time was a healing process for you yeah, and, a, and rebuild, rehabilitation. It really was. Cause, I mean, during that same time, I lost, I went from, I think, 207 to 167. Oh, she could, working out. Working out, push-ups, running, mm-hmm. freeing my mind, playing chess when I stopped doing that, and then reading. Mm-hmm. I read over... 200 books. 200 books 200 inside? Inside. Wow. Whatever books was on my range and I felt like reading <laughs> yeah, it, I yeah, am reading yeah. those books. Okay, lit. You know, I even read storybooks. I got into, I'm like, oh shit, what is, what's he going to do next? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. supposed to be tough. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, did she say that to him? Yeah. Well, you know, those those books will get you through the night. Yeah. When most, most of the guys didn't sleep. Mm-hmm. You know, they had a rule in there that after dinner, which is like nighttime, you can't flush the toilet mm-hmm. because the toilet's too loud. It'll wake 
a man up. Yeah. When a man needs to sleep because he's stressed. Yeah, true. This dude's in there for murder. Yeah. They take Syroquil and other medication to sleep. Yeah. I remember my cell used to take Syroquil. Uh-huh. And I used to joke about him because me and him were cool. I'm like, yo, you're custy. <laughs> he's like, yep. Pop the Syroquil and go out. straight to bed. He's out. Yeah. I'm up reading. Wow. Because that took my mind away from the circumstance and, and the environment that I was in. Mm-hmm. But one thing I remember, I was so in tune with everything that if anyone who's been to, hopefully not much people that watching this can relate to it. When you're in there, you hear when the cell doors open because there's different ranges and they're connected like a web. Mm-hmm. I remember I used to get up, right? Let's say I got up at six and I'll be like, they're, they're about to open this range. Literally five seconds later, you hear, kuh, 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 kuh. Wow. there's no clocks. Uh huh. So, I was in tune. Yeah. So that's how you know what time it is and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, mind you, we're in a thing. There's no windows either. How do I know that? Yeah, 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 yeah. But those places, if you want to make yourself better, you could. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm living proof of that. Yeah. But the guys that I was in there with could never vision me doing this. Yeah, yeah. Never. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> never. Jeez. Okay, mm-hmm. dope. So you do your two years. You come out. Uh, you look for a job. Your car breaks down. You have to do your thing again. What point is does the the beauty products come? Okay, so that comes late years later. Okay, so that, hold on, hold on. Before the, the years later, then what's in between? Or are you just doing your thing? Um, let's just say there's a lot of things that could be in movies. Okay, I'm talking like you know allegedly yeah. from what I hear. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Because one thing, I don't, I don't, I don't. Even going going to jail, I'm even speaking about it from an educational standpoint. A hundred percent. Because I speak about the fact that I made myself a better person, mm-hmm. a better man mm-hmm. while I was in there. Mm-hmm. I don't speak about the things really that I saw. Yeah. I don't speak about the type of individuals really that I met mm-hmm. because I don't want anyone watching this to think that I'm going to glorify that type of lifestyle. Yeah. Because if, yeah. I, if I if you didn't say all this, you I would have never, this from your energy, your vibe, I would have yes. never known. And I work hard for that image. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I think as black men, we have to work on our image, right? 100%. We can't have that goon image. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's it's over for that. Mm-hmm. You know, black is the new rich. Yay. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> Facts. Yes, sir. Okay, dope. So then tell me about how you got into the beauty industry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, I, I some, kinda, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go no, ahead. yeah, yeah. I kind of got sidetracked with the yeah. last question. Yeah. yeah. So the time, honestly, it's it's um from, you know, living that life. Yeah. It was very lucrative. Mm-hmm. I was really good. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was very, very good. Like I was living in Scarborough for years, you know, and it, it was just a really good time. Vacations, yeah, three times a year, traveling for work purposes allegedly. <laughs> like it was a good time. But I always thought to myself, like I don't want to be the forty-year-old, you know, in DB. There. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. I have more more respect for myself than that because I look at the older ones and the ones who actually are still doing it, I don't like their life. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want their life. They got money, but my dude, peace means more to me. Always looking over their shoulder, driving. You know what I mean? All of that, trust me, it's so real. You look out for, you know, the feds. You look Mm -hmm. out for them boys, Mm -hmm. you know, and you you like to think that you're ready. You're you're ready for them boys. Mm -hmm. But to be ready for them boys, you have to keep utensils that when them feds are looking, yeah. it's it's a no-win situation. Mm-hmm. So it's like, how about I just remove myself? Mm. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you know what got me to actually exit that type of life was I read uh, a few books, actually, when I came home. And one of them was a, a PI book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if anyone knows what a PI is, <laughs> I'll say it's a it's it's. It's a pimp book. Mm -hmm. It wasn't glorified pimping. Mm -hmm. It was just demonstrating the mindset behind pimping and hoeing, Mm -hmm. right? And they broke down pimping and hoeing to like even a boss and employers, Mm -hmm. employees, government, government, Mm -hmm. and citizens. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they always said was, and I kept reading it over and over in different um, PI books was, you got to always square up. Mm -hmm. This lifestyle is square up, meaning what, what they call it. Those folks in that lifestyle call a square is someone who works a nine to five. Oh, yeah. Okay. Square up. Yeah. Yeah. Facts. Right. Okay, so you got to always square up. You got to have your plan to get out the game. Mm-hmm. Every successful 
person on the other side of the law mm -hmm. that's successful after that, mm -hmm. you have to get something afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I kept hearing that when I was coming. I kept hearing that. And that kind of made me look at life a little bit different. But before I got into Marche, I was doing so much business. I had four cars in Jamaica. Jeez. I had three three taxis and a rental car mm -hmm. in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I can get this much every year off of this. Okay, there's 30 a year. Yeah. Now, I had a, a rental car business here. Yeah. And I had six cars here. Mm -hmm. And... um. I ended up having to sell those because I couldn't get insurance for them mm -hmm. legally. I wanted to do it all legitimately. Legit, yeah. I could have put all the six cars in my name and whatever happens, happens. But yeah, I didn't want that. I exactly. want what a uh, budget or any other rental company had. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm the type of person, I, I, I always go all in. Yeah. So I ended up buying all the cars before I found that out. Mm -hmm. And they were quoting me like $1,500 per car per month. For insurance? For insurance. Oh, fuck. I'm like, dude, that's... Yeah, yeah, that's that's insane. Right? So <laughs> that scrap, the the rental cars, the, sorry, the taxi and the rental car in Jamaica, family ruined that. You know you know how that yeah, goes. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. bro, it's so lucrative. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so scrap that. I ended up giving away two cars, selling one. I'm, I'm just like, I'm just doing it. Yeah, fuck yeah, it. yeah, yeah. You know, I was doing all of those things. I'm like, I need to figure something else out. So... Me, I used to have locks, uh -huh. right? So I was very much into the, the natural thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I always joke about it. I was going to be the barefoot Rasta, you know, walking yeah, and yeah. chanting, you know, all that good <laughs> shit. Yeah, but um, I don't eat meat. Mm -hmm, me neither. Know? Yeah, so I'm on that. I was on that wave. I was vegan for a bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I need healthier things in my system. And I'm, I'm someone, my daughter especially has sensitive skin, mm. right? Myself, I have sensitive skin, and honestly, we would always break out. But I thought it was so normal for Black people. Mm -hmm. You get a few heat bumps, as they call it, or whatever bumps to break out here and there. I thought it was normal. Yeah. But uh, you know, doing a little research, that shit ain't normal. Mm -hmm. We're just not using the products for us. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're using their products. Mm -hmm. Shit, it's not even designed for them. Yeah, exactly. Really. Yeah. You know, because without sunscreen, they can't use that. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> So I really got into that. I'm like, okay, it got my interest now. Mm -hmm. So I started to check the market. Billion dollar industry. Really? How much do black people consume? Over 80%. Oh, wow. Really? This is all Google. And black YouTube. people own less than 20%. Really? Say less. Yeah. I got this. Yeah. And but, your daughter's like your why too. Yes. Yeah, that's the why. Like. In, in more than one reason, like yeah. for her skin, you know, for for her health benefits, yeah, and for her to take over, yeah. Gee, you know I mean? so that's how. So take me through that. So now you're doing your research. What's next? So the research. Um, I'm 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 a little nerd by heart. I'll admit it. Yeah, Fuck me it. too. That's I'm a nerd. Honest. Me right? too. I love information. I love information. Mm -hmm. Like if I don't, I love I love even new information that proved me wrong the other day. Mm -hmm. I love information. Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of research, doing my research, and just realizing what different ingredients did what in the products. Like I used to literally go and buy like bottles of lotion. Yeah. I won't shout them out. The ops, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> Saint something, yeah. you know, Luber something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to go and look at the ingredients. I'm like, at this point, I knew nothing about this, right? Wow. But I guess at the time, you could say I had a background in chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly, right? So I'm like, I'll figure it out. Yeah. So I start to break it down. And what I used to do, I had a book, a few books. So I'll write down each ingredient. So let's say ingredient such and such. I would look at the function of the ingredient, what it's supposed to do. Wow. And I would look up. And this was the hard part. I would look up the, the natural uh, equivalent or alternative to yeah. that ingredient. Yeah. To and I used to do it. that. And what I realized, they used to put their ingredient list would be like 40 different ingredients. Mm -hmm. But really, only five were in it. Like, they actually did something. The rest of them was just for marketing. Oh. So you could have, like, one-tenth of one percent of, of an ingredient. Yeah. Like shea butter. Yeah. And say, this is our shea butter body lotion. Yeah. It's just marketing. Ah. Uh. Like Palmer's cocoa butter. There's barely any cocoa butter in there. Wow. You know what I mean? But we yeah. grew up on Palmer's yeah, cocoa yeah, butter. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so all those ingredients that we see in some of those products are not really in it, or no, maybe uh, no, they're in it. 
Right. Legally, they have to state every ingredient. But like a little, that stuff that don't even make sense. Bro, it's like if you have a bottle of water, like this, right? This probably has about 10 ingredients. That's uh-huh. all you need. Uh-huh. So they'll, what they'll do is like, let's say they try to market this as, okay, this has sweet mango rose water. Let's say rose hip is, is a natural ingredient. It's a good ingredient for us, right? Let's say they said rose uh, rose water from rose hip mm-hmm. petals. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. How much rose hip do you think they're going to get? You see where it says press? That little it, spot right there? Yeah, yeah. That's one little piece of rose that they put in it just for the marketing purposes. Uh, because if they get tested by an um, external company, or, yeah, it'll have the rose hip in there. Yeah, but just a little. But how much of it? Yeah. And what a lot of people don't know is on an ingredient list, from top to bottom is the most ingredients to the least ingredients. Okay, okay. So I usually know from once you see uh, a certain ingredient, this is my test to find out what's in what. Once you see a certain ingredient, I know that everything after that is like less than half of a percent. Oh, wow. Because that ingredient at most can be 1%. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And they usually put like 20 ingredients yeah, after that. Yeah, and, and that's, that's just for show. Know. Yeah, so I should just discard all of that. I look at the first five or six ingredients, mm-hmm. figure out what does what, and find the, the natural equivalent mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. But here's the kicker. Here's where the chemistry comes in. Because I would find the natural equivalent to those ingredients. Yeah. But when I get my list, those cannot go together. It's too oh. unstable. So you had to uh, like play with it. You had to play with it. The amounts, the temperatures, when to add what, Yourself. how to add what. I did it all. No so you didn't me. hire a chemist. No, I didn't. I'm the chemist. <laughs> That's cr- so. The chemist. Like, uh, take me through. Take me through. Because this is mad interesting. How do you have all these ingredients? And so are you just trying different combinations or? To a degree, like once I have the base, like I would look up certain things like um, on YouTube and stuff like base formulas, you know, people do their little tutorials, which are usually trash. Yeah. You know what I mean? But once I have just the bare minimum, I could work with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I would get the process of how to make a lotion. Okay. You get oils, you get water. Mm -hmm. You blend it together, you get a lotion, but that's basic because it's going to separate. So that's it. Yeah, exactly. Oil and water don't yeah, mix. Don't mix. Yeah. Right? So now you need something called an emulsifier. Mm-hmm. Emulsifier combines oil and water. I don't want to get too technical, yeah, but, yeah. but finding the plant-based ones was hard because now how much of this you would usually use in a regular store-bought brand mm-hmm. with the chemicals that they use, mm-hmm. you could use, let's say, 2%. But in the plant-based one, if I try to it. use the 2%, it breaks apart. Oh. Or if I try to combine it with this oil, they're yeah. not compatible. Oh, so you, know you had what I mean? a dilemma. Yes, sir. So, you know, I always say this. When you buy a bottle or product from me, Marche, mm-hmm. you're paying me to do the research for you. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm getting all the right ingredients. I'm doing all the hard work, the heavy lifting. I'm making sure you're getting that shit that you're paying for. Yeah, yeah. So like... To, not to go too far. Um, yeah, like I, I would do a lot of those tests. So getting the base formula, doing the tests, I fucked up a lot. Mm-hmm. I ruined batches, man. I lost yeah. money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me, I lost money, bro. Yeah. And I have pictures. I took like lotion splattered all on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Like it was so bad. I kept going. I kept making smaller batches. Okay, boom. Until one day, you know, like the mad scientist is yeah. like, wow, got it. <laughs> and I flick Got it. <laughs> Man, I couldn't wait to get that shit out. I gave it to the few homegirls I had at the time. I gave it to them. Like, yo, tell, tell, tell me what you think. Like, yeah. Ah. <laughs> Until this day, they keep saying, yo, I remember that first batch you made. Like, I'm so proud of you. Wow. Like, it was like 2016. Wow. You know what I mean? So once I first, when I got that first batch, I, I knew I was going to be late. So you never did private labeling or anything never. like that? You didn't hire a chemist? Never. Nothing like that? Um, right now, where you're at now, do you have a manufacturer or do you still? Yeah, me. You still do all everything yeah, yourself? Everything. I have a whole system. I don't have, I have a home, obviously, but yes. I don't have a home. It's my factory. Mm. What I need couches for. Wow. So you're still you know I mean? chefing it up. I got all the machines I need. Yeah. I have my label machine. Uh-huh. I have my, my filling machines. I have every machine you, you could think of for this process. I yeah. got it. And how many products do you have exactly you have? Oh, I, I kind of brought it down recently. You know, in business, you see what sells more. And you're like, yeah. okay, let me just park that up for a little bit. Maybe bring it back special edition. I think right now we're at like 
maybe 12 skews. That's like 12 different items, I believe. Okay. Don't quote me, but at one point, I think it was like 20 something, 30. Oh, that's too much to handle. Way too much, bro. And, and self funding, you true, know what I mean? True. It's, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard. Like, I went through it, changing up, uh, uh, designing. Okay, so I'll tell you what I do. I get the ingredients. I'm, I manufacture the product. Mm hmm. I bottle the product, I label the product, I design the labels. Jeez. I or well, I can't print it, but yeah. I bring it to a printer, I label everything. Yeah, like yeah. I do everything from top to bottom. Yeah. Top to bottom. So, so just like playing devil's advocate here, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think um in order to even take it on a bigger level that you'll want you'll eventually leverage yes. those uh, very soon okay uh, responsibilities right now. okay yeah because I, I, I feel like you from like what i'm getting like you're the genius behind your brand mm -hmm. if you leverage those things then you can think even of more ideas yeah and and it's funny you said that because that's my strong suit i'm the thinker mm -hmm. I, I i be laying in bed watching basketball and the announcer will say something like hey write it down has nothing to do with basketball it has mm -hmm. everything to do with my brand yeah you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm just like that. And I, I'm thinking about different products, different this and that. So definitely I've, I've been uh, in contact with some um, some of those types of people. Um, I'm working on some deals. Yeah. So I don't have to be doing this anymore, the actual physical part. Yeah. Because I, although I like to make the products, I don't like manual labor. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. Because right? you're training your time for... Yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. So you're, right now you're in... How many stores are you in? I know you're in the UK one. Yeah, in the UK store, working mm -hmm. on a few more stores right now, actually. But we're in three stores locally okay. right now. And what's the process to getting in a store, especially process. overseas? Okay, see, overseas, that's actually my store. Oh, really? Yeah. The whole store? The store. So okay. basically, I got a lot of family in the UK, in mm -hmm. London, right? And uh, a cousin of mine actually has, you know, she's doing good. She owns a plaza. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So she has a little thing there. So I'm like, yo, give me a spot. Mm -hmm. She give me a spot. I'm like, you know, run it. So basically, I got a little section of the plaza for the Marche store. Okay, dope. So that's how that worked out. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? But even still with that, I'm in talks with UK store, UK retailers to yeah. get the products in there as well. Yeah. Having a store is like a central location, which I wanted to do in Toronto. Mm -hmm. well, shit, rent is too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't even make sense. Nah, I can't do it. Uh-huh. No, nah, I'm not spending ten thousand dollars a month on rent. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. So, so right now you're in three local stores here. Three local stores here. Uh, what's the process of getting them in stores? The and process what type of contracts. Uh, do you have to have? Yeah. See, see, there's different types of contracts, right? But the process of getting them in stores is actually right now for some reason reaching out. If you find, if you see a store like let's say on Instagram, guaranteed they're gonna have their email, their phone, whatever, whatever. I don't DM. Mm -hmm. So I would find an email, reach out, DM, reach out through the email, and if I don't hear a response within like a month, mm -hmm. then I'll DM. Mm -hmm. I'll comment under a picture, and then I'll DM, uh, get your attention, like, yeah. hey, you know, what I mean? yeah. I'm talking to you. Yeah, yeah. answer me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So that's what I did a lot of times. And then for once they see the IG, they go to the page, like, oh, okay. You know, I made it visually appealing. Yeah, for it's very, who comes yeah, on to it. very visually appealing. Oh yeah, I do all the social media. Oh wow. Yeah, so that's another just, story. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a whole another story. Um, so yeah, I'll reach out and let them know. Hey, listen, this is what I got. I see your store. I think this is how. I think this will be mutually beneficial. Mm -hmm. Both of us, like, I'll benefit financially. We'll grow. You'll benefit financially. I'll send my customers there. You know, blah blah blah. What, you work out whatever benefits it will be for them. You highlight that first. Okay. So is it more? Is it like a consignment thing? Like. Yeah, so there's different concepts. Sorry, mm -hmm. you physical? Yeah, no, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so there's different concepts. Like some stores, um, they want you to pay a monthly fee. Okay. And a percentage of sales, mm. right? Um, that works if you're guarant if you're confident that your product will sell. Okay. Other stores, like they'll pay you for, like, let's say they'll make an order. They'll order 10 of this, 10 of that, blah, blah, blah. I'll add it up 100 products. Yeah. Okay, what's your bulk uh, rate? Price, oh, okay. Right? You tell them, okay, this this is a bulk rate, four dollars each, and the retail price is thirteen dollars. Mm -hmm. So they see how much they can make from the that four dollars, and yeah. they just send you that check, okay. and you deliver your products to them. 
Okay. I like those ones better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Money of friends sounds yeah, so good. Yeah, so it's way better. Yeah. It's have, nice. So let me let me let me know. Like, have you thought about a subscription base yet? Because these are the type of products that uh, people are gonna need over and over, right? Yo, a friend of mine actually recently asked me that. Yeah, because I feel like you can kill that subscription space. You see, when she said it, guarantee I was money. Like, I like it. <laughs> I like it. When she, when she said it, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm like, no disrespect. I wasn't trying to shut her up or anything. Yeah. I just didn't have the capacity for it at the time mentally. Mm -hmm. You know, I just so much on my brain. Like, I'm running everything from top yeah. to bottom, marketing this, this, that. I'm like, yeah, subscription for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. got you. But I started to think about it more recently because mm -hmm. that was like two months ago. Mm -hmm. And now that you're asking the question, I think I might have to <laughs> no, yeah, look I, into I, a bit more. I feel that. Like because these are products that people are gonna need over and over, and they, yeah. once they once they love them, they're gonna keep buying. So if they know that they're getting a little off the top with a subscription <laughs> uh, base or a subscription plan, that you rack up like say twenty thousand people, that's guaranteed income. I like that. <laughs> I like that. You know, we have to talk off uh, off camera. Yeah, yeah. Or no, definitely. I, I feel you on that. Like locking in guaranteed uh, customers. Yeah, you know for sure. I mean? How about an affiliate program? I have that. Set I up. seen on the I seen it on the site. I didn't check it. What? How is it set up? Basically, you sign up and you make a very good, healthy percentage off of each sale mm -hmm. that people use your uh, code promo code on. Okay. So if you sign up, they say, hey, "Listen, um, promo code Black is the new rich. You yeah. get thirty percent off. Yeah, Black is the new rich. Thirty percent off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you get well. They get." 30% off already a great price. And then you make probably about 20% off of it. Too. Oh, that's good. That's so good. I mark it down 50%. Yeah. So I could do it, it like this choice is you could either do, um, you get 25% of the sales and then they get 25 or they get 30 to mm -hmm. incentivize them to purchase. Mm -hmm. And then you get 20 on the back end. Okay. How's that working for you now? It works. Definitely. I like it. You know what? I did realize some people are doing it themselves. It's weird. Like they're using their own promo code. Oh, okay, yeah, but yeah. But it's yeah. like you're not really winning. But yeah, hey, yeah. If it whatever, works, it works. I appreciate the sale. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah. Because I feel like just thinking about your business off top, like you mm. know how like um I don't like know how this business model works um exactly, but I feel like MLM like not a pyramid per se, but if you have like t you know what I'm talking about, right? I feel like it can go. That's what she said too. <laughs> she sent me a whole documentary of someone who did that, and I was like, "Actually, I have some people to send you that they are doing do. similar things." And we'll we'll talk about it off cam. Definitely have to explore that option. Yeah. See, see, when you hear something once, it's cool, but when you hear it twice, three times, yeah, you have to listen. Yeah, for sure. I'm all ears. Like now, you have me thinking. <laughs> you shouldn't have done that, but I could be thinking for a month now, bro. Yeah, because I feel like um, just if you one, you have to have products that are good, right? Yeah. You have products that are good yeah, and once that. people know that products are good it's either subscription subscription base or you know it'd be like hey you like the product so much come work for me right and then you have the like you just call Physically. them their managers they're your managers or whatever and then yeah. so it takes a little bit of the workload off of yourself that you don't always have to market advertise to everyone they're marketing and advertising because that's their dollars too the new AJ Vaughn. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, like exactly, it. exactly. I'm, I'm because happy. all those business, like, like you said, Avon, all mm -hmm. those business models can be still relevant today. You just gotta go, uh, like, research the the yeah. business model and pull it right back out. Man, you you just awaken something in me, bro. I, <laughs> I, I'm definitely gonna explore that because I I agree. Mm -hmm. You know, I actually wasn't. Sure, I was kind of hesitant. I wasn't sure if that kind of model would work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But a lot of these models that we like, we grew up on, are like it, they just have to be tweaked, tweaked a little a bit, bit, right? Just for this modern day stuff, yeah, especially with social sense. medias, like influencer. Have you done? I was gonna, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, influencer marketing and all yeah. that. Yeah, influencer marketing. You get a couple big influencers. Just let that go and be like, hey, you're the face of this brand. You know, I'll speak on that too. Yeah. There, there's something going on. I don't know what happened. Yeah. When I started this business 2019, you could pay a beautiful lady, you know, maybe a hundred, you know, make a post, talk about yeah, it. Yeah, now they're, they're charging now. Now they're asking me, like, like I'm auditioning for them. Wow. <laughs> and I'm just scratching my head like, what, what, what just happened here? <laughs> Like, we're the brand. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No disrespect to any of those folks, but like, I'm not giving you $5,000. 5000 
Oh mm-hmm. no, come on. No, thank you. So what are you doing for marketing and advertising right now? Marketing and advertising, I do a lot of Google ads, Sorry, you know, that? Facebook, yeah. Instagram uh, ads, stuff like that. And you know, you never beat word of mouth. Uh-huh. So we try, try to be at as much pop-ups and like trade show, not so much pop-ups, but yeah. trade shows as much as we can. Mm-hmm. And I have a thing why I don't do much pop-ups locally. Why? Because I know my city. Yeah, true. When true. you're too local, they treat you like it. Yo, trust me. You know, like I aim at the US and the UK. Mm-hmm. Because once they see that, then they'll they'll fall suit. That's right? how. That's that's that's. I feel like it's a Toronto thing, but it could be just any. They say it's thing. every city, but I don't know. I don't know because I. I've been to the U.S. a lot. I've been to the U.K. a lot, and they support mm-hmm. their own. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a not to different. say that we don't support our own. It's, it's different. Just, it takes a little longer. It's I believe. harder. Yeah, it's harder. You know it's, harder. I mean? it's so hard. It, it like, is hard. They were literally. I seen people. We people know I have a brand. I know them personally, mm-hmm. and you're not obligated to do anything for me, right? Mm-hmm. But I have a brand, and you use the brand, but you're not gonna post or make a story. Hey, just receive my package. No. But the brand in the U.S. that's popular, yeah. you know, that yeah. you might get some clout off or something. Hey, see my package. Can't wait to try it. I'm like, oh, okay. yeah. I'm watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're going to have something for me to support yeah, one day. I'm yeah. petty as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. I'm petty. I'm yeah. petty. I'm petty LaBelle. <laughs> I'm with it, bro. Yeah. Like, when you go low, I go lower. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, no, but my, like, my, my marketing plan is definitely to target the U.S. because... That's where things happen for, um, in business. Mm-hmm. You know, if you ever have any type of business, like the market in the U.S. is just so much bigger. Yeah. Have you, you been out to Atlanta? I haven't been there yet. Mm-hmm. I, I, feel, been... I feel like you should touch that market. I feel so too. You know, even off camera, like I have a little bro that lives out there. So oh, yeah, yeah if, we'll talk about like just oh, sending some definitely. products out and just seeing how it works. Definitely. Because we're actually working with a few stores. Um, one's in Houston. Mm-hmm. I'll leave it there. Yeah, 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 a few stores that you know bring the products. To, they're not major retailers, but they're on their way there. Mm. You know what I mean? So, no, definitely like the marketing thing with with Canada. And I'll tell you why I don't do the pop ups. Mm-hmm. Really, really, I've done one or two of them, and honestly, when when they come through, they they don't want to pay. Yeah. Trust me. They don't want to pay. Yeah. Like they want free stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're from here. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what's so big about you? Like, do you realize the years of research <laughs> I just did? Like, I, I do this. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's not for fun. Mm-hmm. I want to make something off of this. Mm-hmm. You know? But another question. How, like obviously we're in 2022 and everything's digital, digital, digital. How do you remain to have a faceless brand brand and it's successful? Um, as far as having a faceless brand, I don't think I had the luxury of any other option, mm-hmm. you know, because being a man in the industry, true, you know, true. I can't come, hey guys, I got sweet mango rose water for you. Yeah. And like, okay, creep. <laughs> you know I mean? Fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So honestly, like even the, up until this day, most people still think it's owned by a woman. Yeah. When I make every Instagram post. I tried to you channel the inter- my inner woman, yeah, 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 so yeah. to speak. Yeah, yeah. I would speak, "Hey, girl, have you?" <laughs> you know, all of that yeah, shit. I've yeah, done yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm looking at myself like, "Bro, <laughs> holy shit!" I'm calling her sis. And yeah, 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 yeah. Responding to messages like, "Damn." Yeah. I mean, I got someone now. Yeah. You know, like that controlling was, that. Yeah. But it was like for for the first so often, like is running it as if I was a woman because I know and and I know our culture. Mm-hmm. You know, Fair. you know, unfortunately, there's a little standoffishness yeah. between the genders a bit. Yeah. Just a bit. Yeah. Just a tad. Yeah. You know, so I understood our people. Mm-hmm. So I want you to like it and love it first. Mm-hmm. So when I say, hey, by the way. It's me. <laughs> you know, you still be like, mm, okay, I love it though. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, in yeah. a sense. But even the other way around, um, the, fa- the brands with a face, I personally feel there's there's a way to do that in a good way but the people who do that mostly they're banking on someone liking them mm-hmm. i don't really care to be liked mm-hmm. you just want a good product i just want i, I sell a great product mm-hmm. this product is better than anything you use mm-hmm. like it it's it's tested i i used to put under every post or, or most posts if you don't like it i'll pay your rent wow most people probably didn't even read that wow far. wow have you ever but, done it 
Paid rent? Yeah. No. Oh wow. Never. <laughs> oh, wow. You love you can't you cannot honestly say that you use my product and, it and you work. don't like it. Yeah. I have probably a couple of bad reviews. You know what the reviews are for? Mm-hmm. I got it late. Oh. Or he said or they said they were gonna deliver. All right, bro. Yeah, come yeah. On. that's not really about the product. Yeah. It's Tell a- me it's trash. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Oh matter no, I'm lying. One person said they don't like the smell, it's too strong. Mm. Well, you bought a scented product. Yeah. You know what I'm trying yeah. to say? Like, come on. Dope. But um, yeah, people banking on people, other people liking them. Mm-hmm. And because they like you, they'll buy your product is one thing. I, I don't think I'm I'm that person. True. To you know what I mean? Well, you know your strengths, right? And your weaknesses. Yeah. That's why Damon John got LL. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know facts, what I'm trying to say? Facts, facts. Damon John was probably a nerd at the time. Yeah. He couldn't sell FUBU himself. Yeah. Got what put LL behind it and then let it go. Interesting. So what challenges are you facing right now? Actually, before we get into the challenges right now, looking back at just your beauty journey, what challenges have you faced that you had to overcome? Challenges? Damn, so there's so many. Apart um, from the mixes. <laughs> no, I think um, some of the major challenges I've had to face was what to come out with. Mm. You know, the, the brand direction. Mm-hmm. Like there was a certain point where I'm like, okay, do I do it more like a Bath and Body Works? Do I do it more like a this brand or that brand? Because it's different. I I have each scent is a lotion and body wash. Mm-hmm. Do I add a scrub with the same scent? Mm-hmm. Do I add a body oil? Do I add this? Do I add that and wow. make it a whole line of six? Yeah. And then have you know six different options of each six. Oh, That's yeah. thirty six. Yeah, yeah, true. Or I just come with not the basics, but what the, what we use. We shower. We need this. After we shower, we need a moisturizer. Mm-hmm. Do I just keep it there? Do I go into hair? Do I leave it alone? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's one of the challenges in testing the market. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't come from. I do come from a marketing background. You know, allegedly, <laughs> so, but it's a different type yeah, of marketing. One hundred percent. You know that kind of marketing is hey, you got this? Yeah, yeah. I got it. You really got it? Yeah. No. <laughs> you know, say, oh, God, shit, talking yeah. about? but this is like hey you got this yeah i got it yeah but yeah those, that's one of the major challenges but you know honestly i'm I'm a daredevil with this thing. yeah you know business you gotta you gotta be you gotta be a risk uh, taker yeah man it, it's it's so deep because i've come out with things and sold zero units really can't you would never know. I yeah. act like I sold out. Yeah. You know what I mean? you can't yeah. tell nobody no yeah. can't tell no one the failures. Yeah. How'd you so, overcome that? Um alcohol. I... No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, no. How'd I overcome it? Honestly, man, just come out with something else. Mm-hmm. I have to redeem myself. Mm-hmm. I, I can't sit and take an L. Mm-hmm. You know, I gotta come out and say, you know what, I failed last time. Let me do this and I'm gonna win. Even if I sold one this time, it's a win. Mm-hmm. Cause I know I'm one step closer to what? Is gonna work, mm-hmm. you know. I came out with the the hairline recently in March, and I was I came out. I'm like, you know what? Let's just see what happens. Mm-hmm. And it's been doing great. So you have a hairline too. I have a hairline now, yeah. Wow. A hairline now. And how shampoo. did you get into that? Actually, um, Marche in the early's before it was actually officially launched. Yeah. I took more uh, time and energy into hair products. Okay. But I just Makes realized sense. from the skincare in the industry, I'm like, okay, I got to tap into this. True. So I kind of left the hair alone. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of went back into it, mm-hmm. you know, kind of thought about, you know, if you have skin, you also have hair. Yeah. yeah you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah. let me cover everything. Yeah. And bring healthy products. Yeah. Right? So people can just uh, invest in one brand for everything. You got everything. Like, wow. And another, this is probably the major, uh, what, what, what was the word you used? Uh, uh, yeah, whatever it was, right? This is one of the things where challenge, challenges, yeah. I guess, right? One of the major challenges was selling during the pandemic, Ooh. right? Because mm-hmm. I launched my business before the pandemic, and I won't lie, it wasn't doing nothing. Yeah, you know, but I was like, okay, I just gotta keep going. After about four or five months, I'm like, fuck, did I, did I, did I do the right thing? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I losing? Like, what am I doing? I'm in the street, like, I'm yeah, looking with lotion. Like, no one is not selling. <laughs> yeah. But then the pandemic hit, and I remember panic. Pandemic hit in March, right? 
I had like four consecutive months of doing like a hundred dollars, fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, whatever. Bro. A month. A month. Oh wow. A month, bro. Yeah. I was posting four times a day. You would never know. <laughs> yeah, I'm like winning. <laughs> you know, so you have to fake the fuck a bit. Yeah. So I used to do that. So four straight months of making literally nothing. Yeah. And then pandemic hits in March, April, I made three thousand. Jeez. Like, just like that. Just like that. I made a joke where I was like, "Yo, people realize they need to bathe." Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? So it, it was it was up. Yeah. And honestly, all throughout the pandemic, it stayed around that and has kept going up and up to the yeah. point we're at right now. It's we're good. better. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Better, you yeah. Know what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I can't retire yet, but yeah. if I complain, I'll be ungrateful. Wow, amazing. You know? So what's some advice that you would have for someone coming up in the beauty industry uh, starting from scratch? In the beauty industry? That's rough. Um, see, one thing with the beauty, and she probably even give the advice, right? Um, this is why I put so much pride on what I do. The beauty industry is a few different categories. Most of the people in our community that get into the beauty industry, they don't make what I make. Mm-hmm. Majority of the people, no, no offense to them. Like I got friends with brands, and they'll make like body butters, mm-hmm. whip body butters, mm-hmm. which is like a lower end version of what they want. They they want to make this. Mm-hmm. But this takes too much science. Mm. No, again, no offense to them, right? Yeah. This is science right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. It takes nothing to get shea butter and a regular oil and whip it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I throw peppermint in there. Mm-hmm. It's a good product, mm-hmm. but it ain't this. Yeah. Right? Cause and this is all plant-based. All plant-based. Every ingredient comes from a plant. Jeez. Every single ingredient. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I take pride in, in that. Yeah. Because you know it's healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, but at the same time, I want to make sure that it does what the other brands do. True. You know, even even better than they do it. True. You know, you know, black people, we got to go above and beyond, right? To yeah. sell even our own sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, oh, I know you're used to using this, but this does it too. It's actually better. Just try it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, shit, I got, what, advice. What, what, what? Yeah, the, the <laughs> advice, the advice. Advice for anyone in the beauty, coming up in the beauty industry, starting from scratch. Do your research first. Mm-hmm. You know, I would say if this is what you really want, just know that you're not you're not going to be an overnight success. Mm-hmm. You know, almost almost no one is an overnight success in this industry. Mm-hmm. Um, again, there are those outliers. Um, I'm not one of them. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't sell magic coochie cream. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, yeah. there's some brands that made it rich, yeah. literally. Um, they they tell you, hey, r- hey, sis, rub this oil down there, and he'll never leave you. <laughs> and then they make a million in a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. have too much integrity for that. Mm-hmm. I can't lie to people. Facts. You know, I have a, I have a thing. I don't lie to anyone. If I lie to you, that means I'm scared of you. Facts. The fuck, am I doing lying to you, bro? Facts. And, <laughs> and a point too, it's like with the overnight success, like even this podcast, right? I have some people that I can reach out to that are let's say bigger names or whatever, but I wouldn't even put them on right now because mm. I'm not even ready for that attention that might mm. come, right? Because I want to go through the whole process. Very smart. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to get used to this uh, space that I'm in and then maybe ask my ass later on. You know, it's funny you said that. And that's intelligence right there. Most people wouldn't understand it. Like, fuck that, get him. Mm-hmm. Nah, I'm not ready yet. I, I'm, I'm just being ready like when you're talking about, do you have you thought about someone else making the, the stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just ready now. Mm-hmm. After three years in business, yeah, I had to know everything good and everything bad, and in I had your to own fuck business. up. Yeah, I had to fuck up, learn, get better from it, fuck up even worse, get mm-hmm. better from that. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. There's nothing you could tell me about this industry right now. Mm-hmm. There's nothing you could tell me about these ingredients that I use. Yeah, there's nothing you could tell me about my business. Yeah, that I haven't already known and yeah. been through. Yeah. So now I'm ready for the big box chains. Mm. Now, you know, you go and get your uh, commercial insurance. Mm-hmm. Now you go and register with this and now I won't say what I need to say. But yeah. now I'm being seen and I'm actually in negotiations with big retailers in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Them ones. Mm. Them ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. With negotiation. No, I, would, I would say, you know, a conversation. Okay. Not even negotiation. Let me ask sure, you. Whatever it is, they take it. Would you, would you, would there be ever a point where you sell some equity in your brand? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. 
how would you go about that? I want to sell. You or you want to sell hundred yeah. percent of it or like? I would never a sell hundred percent. Yeah, obviously, because it wouldn't be yours. But a percentage of it, you would. But I would sell next to hundred percent. Yeah. I just want to know I get a check every month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I'm trying yeah. to say? And just because I named it after my two kids, mm. I couldn't fully let it go. Yeah. But I let it go. You want you want 99? Yeah. Percent? Take it. Yeah. Give me that 1% of however however much millions. Yeah. I'll take that. Yeah. Because at the end of the day. And now you can build other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like it's definitely. Business is, is who I am. Mm-hmm. I'm a businessman. Mm-hmm. But I always say it like I go so hard because I'm a lazy nigga. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Like, I'm a lazy dude. Yeah, you know what I mean. I just know that I can't be lazy right now. Mm-hmm. I work so hard so I can be lazy later. Yeah, facts. You know what I'm trying to say? Like yeah. I love Canada. I'm from here, but I want to be on an island somewhere doing nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Wondering what am I gonna do later? Oh, fuck it, let's go drink. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm trying yeah. to say? Like, and you know you're secure financially. Mm-hmm. That is my goal, and I want to do that before forty. Wow. Okay. You know, I'm in my early 30s now, so I got a little bit of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, that's it. Dope. So I'm going to ask you a question that I ask everybody on the show. What's the best advice that you've gotten? And what's the worst advice? And you don't have to name names. Best advice and worst advice. <laughs> uh, Worst advice. Mm, there's so much bad advice. Especially in our culture, too. Yeah, bro. Everyone thinks that they're scholars, man. Yeah. And sometimes you have to just bite. <laughs> yeah, you're right, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'd say some of the best advice has nothing to do with business. It's just life mm-hmm. and how, how to conduct your life. One individual reminded me of how I play chess. Mm-hmm. He says, you're hard to beat in chess. It's because you have time to think. Mm, bars. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So I would say for me, that was the best advice mm-hmm. I've gotten in a while. Mm-hmm. Worst advice, probably to the tune of just do it. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. Nah. Think nah, about debt it. Debt happens. Yeah, debt happens. Jail happens. Mm-hmm. Death happens. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to really think about this thing. Mm-hmm. And I'll say to anyone, Honestly, anyone that, not even anyone wants to get into business. I'll say anyone that wants to be successful, you have to be willing to die for it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you ain't willing to die for it, it ain't for you. Mm-hmm. You got to put everything you got into That this Nipsey thing. type shit, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to put everything. Nothing's left out. Mm-hmm. Everything. When Nipsey say all money in, it's yeah. literally that. Yeah. Are you willing to go broke? Yeah. I'm willing to go broke. Yeah, fact, same. If you had a choice... Between rent or invest in your business, mm, I'm to where you business. before where you get get the benefits six months later, mm-hmm. I'm taking the, the business. Mm-hmm. I'll figure out rent. Mm-hmm. Shit, I'll take two three months off of rent. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got a couple months to fight it. Yeah, yeah. By that time, yeah. the business would have. You yeah. know what I'm trying to say? But that's the mindset you kind of have. Listen, pay your rent. Mm-hmm. I'm not telling no one to pay not to pay their rent. I'm just saying the mindset you have to have going into being successful. Mm-hmm. You have to really fucking want it. Mm-hmm. This is why it's only success is only designed for the few. Yeah. If it was easy, everyone would really do it, bro. Yeah. Facts. I agree. So I like, well, we like to make predictions on this show, right? So in five years from now, I want to play this back. I want to know where you see yourself in five years, business, I, whatever. Uh, in five years, I definitely see myself taking a backseat in this company. Mm-hmm. Um, if the company, if I'm even still involved with the company. True. True. My goal is always to make something for the community. Mm-hmm. And then once it gets to a certain point, I'm not one of those people that says don't sell. Mm-hmm. This is business. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll sell. Yeah, going low, sell high. But this, the thing is, when I do sell, I'll be doing something else for the community. Facts. I yeah. didn't just forget about this. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. So in five years, I see myself working the business up to a sellable price, selling it to the right buyer so our community will still have the product Mm -hmm. and moving on to different ventures that I'm already moving into. Dope, dope, dope. Have you ever thought about like, I don't know, I don't know if it's public speaking or because I feel like you have such a story that needs to be told more. Like even like when I look at your, your personal Instagram, like I said, like what I got today, I would never have gotten if we didn't speak. Have you yeah. thought about even like talking to the youth, any youth programs? Yeah. Because you're you are you you're it. You're the story that. that people need to hear. 
Appreciate that, bro. Um, I, I definitely did. But sometimes I just think like, nah, they, they got enough of those. Like you open up IG. Listen, what you need to do is. I'm like, I'm not these guys. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just. But even I as just, a, on a ground level too. Like yeah. you don't even have to do all that. Well, definitely. Like I do keep a few young boys around me. You know what yeah. I mean? Like. Cool. That it's funny, yo, yo, OG, OG. I'm yeah. like, I'm only like 34. <laughs> Call me OG. I'm, yeah, like, yeah. I'm not unk. I'm still big bro. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, definitely, it's an idea. Like, I plan to do something in the future where, you know, we have a lot of things in our community that's um, girl centered. Mm-hmm. Black girl rock, black girl magic. Mm-hmm. We never hear about the black boys. Yeah, facts, facts. Because we talk about all this about black girl magic, but who are the men they're gonna marry? Yeah. If you pump everything into them, what about, us? what about us? And that eventually will hurt them. Right? So I have a thing that I want to do once things get to a certain level mm-hmm. um, to where I want to not just mentor, but actually invest True. In, our, in our boys. True. I'm going to start locally. True. Because I remember I was a little black boy with an idea. Mm-hmm. All you need is some financing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So there's, there's, there's a lot that I was thinking about. I just haven't pulled the trigger on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I appreciate the, the kind words. Yeah, you know? no, no, because you definitely have it. And I, I, obviously, like, I feel like kids gravitate to auth- authentic- authenticity. Authenticity, right? Yeah. And you have the story. Yeah. Not many people have these stories. Either like some fabrication or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, they oh, have the. You have these stories. So, uh, in the future, if I seen that, I'd be like, ah, I knew yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, you know, someone like me having a story. This is why, like, like you said, you would never have thought that. Yeah, never. Because I don't want you to think that of me. Yeah, facts. I've, I've always had this insecurity that people. Are, I've always been judged my whole life. I was the bad kid, even from family. I was the black sheep. Yeah. You're never gonna be no. You're gonna be this. You're gonna be that. Yeah. I get it. I have a certain, I used to have that opinion mm-hmm. or energy. that perception mm-hmm. of myself, right? That energy. And a lot of it was warranted because I, I acted like it. Yeah. So especially like when I came home, I'm like, yo, my image needs to change. Mm-hmm. You know, I got more in tune to culture, who I am as a man, I, you know, everything like that. And I'm thankful that you didn't see my story in me. Mm-hmm. I had to tell you. Yeah. Yeah, facts. I think that in in and of itself is something for youngers to to really look at and say, shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was that nigga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll say, like anything you could think of in the streets, mm-hmm. allegedly, like I'm very aware mm-hmm. and very knowledgeable of the concepts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll say it like that. Mm-hmm. I'm aware from YouTube. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, and social media. Okay, dope. Um, any last words or you can let people know where to find you, where to find your products. Uh yeah, um you can find me, my personal page. I might start doing some speaking. Yeah. Um, King Mani, King M A N I, a couple underscores. But forget that. This is the company right here. This is the brand right here, Marche Beauty. And on IG, you can find that Marche Beauty, M A R S H A Y Beauty. You know how to spell beauty, right? And I actually have a gift for you, my guy. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this here is from the men's. I'll let you open it. Okay. From the men's line. So I've got the body wash there, hair, face, everything, all in one, and Jeez, the body lotion. Jeez, look at that. That right there, bro. You, you lotion with that bad boy? Yeah, I'm nice. Listen, they're on you for the night. <laughs> Don't go outside, bro. Say it last. Yo, I'll be coming back with some reviews, too. Yeah, listen, <laughs> it's really that. Okay, thank you. I appreciate mm-hmm. it. And I honestly, I appreciate you coming through and you being vulnerable and telling a story because this is another one of those episodes. It's like that episode, yeah. you know? Appreciate, appreciate that, it. Thank dude. you so much. Appreciate that. All right.